Now this is what is known as the Eureka card. The Eureka card was mailed by the Zodiac Killer to the press. First of all, let me just tell you what's on here. There's a key to his location. There's a key to what he's doing. There's the key to who all are, are involved and how many of them there are, which relates back to his triad. There's more than one triad, he said, and I, there's a clue here about who is uh, investigating him. Did I mention there's a key to where he's hiding out? And his initials are on here also. I'm going to tell you what he told me about this card. You have a snowman wearing a Groucho Marx mask, a scarf around its neck, and a hat. One of the first things he told me was, why do you think it has a Groucho Marx mask on? And I go, I don't know. He goes, well, who's Groucho Marx? And I goes, well, he's an actor. He goes, yeah, he's a comedian. So that's there to make fun of something. And I go, well, what? And he goes, the rabbit. And I go, why? He said it's... The rabbit is specifically the detective who is looking for him, or anyone else who's looking for him. And I go, what, why a rabbit? And he goes, well, because what do, you, what do you know about rabbits? And he goes, anything. But the snowman is big and powerful. He said that the rabbit, what made him so innocent and so helpless, helpless is the word I'm looking for, he's looking straight at the killer big as he can be, big as, bigger than life, and the rabbit can't see him. He's helpless. A couple of things that he told me about the snowman. Number one was he said that his initials are in this hand, the eyes, and in the rabbit. And that was all you would tell me about it. So I started studying that and looking and looking and looking. I remember him telling me. I asked him, I said, this could be a why. And he said, well, yeah, it could. But that's, it's, that's not what it's for because right? that's over here too. Go, okay, well, I guess you could hallucinate an F out of here. And he goes, you could. Well, Frank Morris's first initial is an F. And that's it right there. And he said the, a big key to his identity is in these eyes. And I go, okay, well, he said, look close at the eyes, tell me what you see. Now, you're not going to be able to see this here on my card. You will have to look on the internet, pull this up and get close to it. You'll see that there's an L in there that looks like it was drawn with a wide magic marker. And he goes, right, it's an L. And I go, okay, we've gone over other things before where we found L's being one of his initials. Well, Frank Lee Morris, that L is pretty important to him. He sent these, a lot of these things to... A guy named Avery, and he changed, he put an extra letter in his name to make it Averly, so Lee would be at the end, so people would have a clue to who he was. And I don't think he ever really wanted people to figure it out. He just wanted to be able to feel like he was so intelligent and so important to come up with that, and that no one would be able to figure it out. Well, no one ever has. It's been 44 years. I even I could barely figure it out, and he told me directly what all of it meant. Anyway, I wanted to uh, tell you another little clue of his, the pal thing, pen pal, secret pal. Um, in the SLA card, he said something about to kill, and then he signed it, a friend. But what he was getting at with all of that was the people, most of the people that he killed was his friends. He got some type of a really turn on off of making friends with people and then killing him. And when he was telling me that about the pal and friends and things like that, he started looking at me with these diabolical eyes. And uh, I had to back him down a little bit. He, he was getting scary. Now, okay, we got to talking about the clothing that he's wearing. He goes, why would a snowman need a scarf? And I said, I don't know. It's pretty cold. He's made out of snow. Why would he need one? He said, he doesn't. And I go, so what does it represent? He says it represents a rope around his neck. And I go, okay, what's he going to do, hang him? And he goes, more or less. If they catch him, 
And I go, okay. And he says, and it could uh, represent other things that have to do with hanging or choking. He's talking about choking his victims to death. Which, by the way, I don't think he did a lot of the killings. I think most of them were done by John Anglin. John Anglin was a bigger boy, and he was pretty strong and a good fighter, and he was good with a knife. Frank Morris was a smaller stature guy, and he was just immensely terrified of everything. He told me that when he did the Dan Cooper jump, he actually wet his pants when, they, when he opened up the, the back end of the plane and looked out into what he called the abyss. He said that darkness and cold and everything, and he said they're still trying to figure out what that wet spot was on the ramp there, and he said it was where he wet his pants. And I said, what? What do you mean? What are you talking like I, you know, I just didn't understand why you would wet your pants. And he said it didn't matter because I was getting ready to take a shower anyway. I go to the shower, and he goes, "Yeah, I was going to jump out into the rain." And I go, "Oh, okay." And you know, I really didn't believe that he was on a plane back then when he told me that. I was 17 years old. I thought he was talking about walking outside of his house into the rain. I thought he was making this whole thing up anyway because it was seemed so unbelievable. But anyway, back to the snowman. He said that. Uh, there's a lot of clues in here. That clue, he said also uh, the hat. And I said, yeah, why does he need a hat? Again, he's a snowman. He doesn't need to keep his head warm. The only thing I can remember about that hat is he said that the red represents blood. And he had told me before he liked to see blood all over the place. That was the time he pulled a knife on me. Well, he tried to. I took it away from him. I think there's something in this uh, little ball here that you see it's white on the top and blue on the bottom. I think the white is the sky and the blue is water. I believe it has something to do with the Dan Cooper jump and him jumping in the area where there was a kind of a lake or a river or something. Now, he said, there's importance in the snowflakes. And I go, really? Which ones? And he goes, all of them. And I go, well, what is it? Are they like uh, little this one looks like a duck or something he goes yeah no but that's not intentional he says the the importance in the snowflakes is that there's a lot of them and i go oh okay and he says and what happens with snowflakes and i go well they fall and he goes yeah they're down here on the ground they fall from the sky and they're down here on the ground and this rabbit is walking in them now what I've put together on what he was trying to tell me was this is d the detectives and anyone else. He even said this, anyone else who's looking for me. They're looking right at me and they can't see me. Okay, and I'm making fun of them, laughing at them. That's what the ma the, the uh, nose and the glasses are about, Groucho Marx. And he says there's clues on here to my identity. And I go, okay. He go, I say, what are they? And he goes, well, if you look really close at this picture right here, he asked me what I saw in these buttons, and I said, well, I don't know, but this one looks like it's got a Z in it, and he goes, it does. That's another key to my identity. He was talking about the Zodiac. I didn't know it at the time, and I didn't know what a Zodiac was anyway. I thought it had to do with astrology. Now, if you look closely in those buttons, you can see that something that looks like a mistake, you'll, you won't, I won't be able to show it to you here. You'll have to look at this up on the Internet and get, get some close-ups on it to see the Z and everything. It won't come out on a picture. And he said that uh, there's a reason there's three of them. And I go, really? And he goes, yeah, because there's three people involved. I think he was referring to himself and the Anglin brothers because John Anglin's the guy who did most of the killing. Frank was a smaller guy, smaller statue. He wasn't very strong and he was very, very scared of everything, including himself. And he... Uh, and he would let John do the dirty work for him. This is why he, another reason that he was so difficult to catch. People would be identifying them and they weren't always identifying him. They were identifying one of the Anglin brothers. Now, let me go on. Uh, he said, he told me that he was going to try and put each one of their initials in these uh, charcoal buttons but that it it was difficult to do and it messed up. I think this was supposed to one of these was supposed to be a J. That he just tried to make them all look like a Z. 
Now, there's significance in the fact that he has his arms up here. There's also significance in the fact that he has only three fingers. The three fingers, again, refer to the triad. Frank Morris, John Anglin, Clarence Anglin. That there's three of them, the same way as these three dots, these three buttons do, and the three balls of snow. He even asked me that, why do you think there's three balls of snow? And I said, well, because you have to have a head, you know. And he goes, yeah, but it's the triad. And uh, there's some significance in this, but I don't remember what it was. I'm thinking maybe this is water under here with a sky over it, and it had something to do with the the, the uh, Dan Cooper jump that he made in 71, I believe it was. Now, let me regress a little. Uh, let's go to his initials. He said that the, his first initial is in this hand, and I said, well, you know, I mean, I don't see any initials there, but you could hallucinate an F out of this if you went here to here, from here to here. I have a very shaky hand. It's hard for me to show you that. And he said, it could be. Well, Frank Morris is an F. And then he said, there's another initial in the eyes. There, uh, no, he, no, he said there's a, there is a key to a, my identity in the eyes. And if you look very close, again, you have to do this on the internet, look very close at these eyes, you'll see there's an L in each eye, just like that. A nice thick L that was made with what looks like a magic marker. Well, Frank's middle name is Lee. And he was really into that. He tangled people named Lee all up in what he was doing. So, if you look down here at the rabbit, what do you see here? That's an M. Okay? <laughs> Frank Lee Morris. His identity is in there. And I'm not telling you something that I conjured up from staring at this uh, card. I'm telling you what he told me 44 years ago and how I'm relating it back to what it was that he wanted me to understand. He also talked about this here being an initial of one of his friends. That's a J for John Anglin. And there's a C right there, Clarence Anglin. Now, the tracks and the rabbit walking in them. Let me make one thing clear to you before I go on to where his location is at, because there's a key on here to where he's at. This is could be looked at as being Frank Morris, the Zodiac Killer. This is Dave Toshi or anyone else who's looking for him. They're looking right at him, and they can't see him, and he's laughing at him with the mask. Now, what these snowflakes mean. He didn't tell me directly, but now I know because he said they were what he was all about and that what this guy wanted to stop him from doing and it was just raining down on him like snowflakes. And the, what this guy wanted to stop him from doing, these tracks have a significance. He's walking in that. Now, in retrospect, I'm thinking what he's talking about is these are all the people he's murdering because he is murdering, had murdered so many people after he left America and went to Mexico City because Mexico City is one of the biggest cities in the, I think it's number two biggest in the world. 22 million people crammed into a little bitty space, so many of them living in high rise apartments that if they had to run out into the road, they couldn't do it. Uh, there was a there was an earthquake there, and I think it was 1982. Many, many people died in the buildings because as many as could get into the road got into the road. The rest of them couldn't get out. The buildings fell down and killed them all. Now, I'm going to give you a couple other things, and then I'm going to regress back to the snow. These snowflakes indicate all the people he's murdering all over Mexico City, and he's holding his hands up in front of this detective to show him, hey, Look at this. I got everything I want, and you're staring right at me, and you can't do anything about it. Back then, there was a no extradition policy between America and Mexico, and a lot of criminals fled to Mexico to live because the American legal system could not extradite them out of Mexico. And it's so bad that the police are actually walking in the dead bodies and can't see them. Now, 
here's the key to where he's at. He asked me about this line. He said, what does that line look like to you? I says, I don't know. It's like a, a line or a barrier. He says, a barrier. Yeah. And I go, well, like, but what kind of barrier? Is this trees or something? He goes, no, they're mountains. And I go, he goes, and it's not really a barrier. It's a border, which is a barrier, right? And I go, yeah, yeah, it could be a border. And he goes, and what's, where does it snow at? And I go up north. And he goes, okay, this is north of the border. And I go, okay. And he said, this is south. And he goes, and if you look right here, you will see two mountains, a big one here, a small one here, and there's a pass going in between them. Have you ever seen anything like that? And I go, yeah, the time I rode the bus into Mexico City, there was a pass that the road went into. And he goes, exactly, and that's what that is. And I go, so this is a key to the fact that you're in Mexico City? And he goes, yes. He goes, and when you go through this pass, what's the first thing you notice when you get through on the left, that big statue? And I go, yeah, there's a statue of Jesus there holding his hands up, holding his hands up in the air. And he says, right. He says, right, and that is also what this could represent, the statue of Jesus. So that's a lot of clues on how to find your way to where he is at, or was at, because I think he's dead now. But anyhow, we've got his initials, F, L, M. We've got the initials of the other, the Anglin brothers, three, two different, three different things about the triad, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Did I mention that each of these sticks, there's a reason it's a stick and it only has three fingers? And those three fingers refer to the triad of Frank Morris, John Anglin, and Clarence Anglin. I believe, and that's all I have for you. What more do you need? F-L-M, Frankly Morris.